Jose answer my question. He just started recording. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Hello everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining us for uh, Latin DACC's Latinx Heritage Month uh, week of programming. My name is Jose Aranda. I work for the Doña Ana Community College Library and it is uh, my honor to introduce to you this afternoon's presentation on getting to know your sister cities uh, here in Las Cruces. Uh, I'd like to present to you uh, Drs. Tim Chapel and Hale Hubert from the Sister Cities Foundation. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, let, I'll just introduce myself real quick. My name's uh, Tim Chapel, and I uh, teach computer information technology at the community college. And I've been involved with the Sister Cities for 15 years now. So, Hale? Yeah, I, uh, I've been involved uh, with Sister Cities since uh, 1995. So that's like 25 years, and it's been the absolute joy of my life. I've been involved with both of our sister cities, uh, Lerdo, Mexico, and Edinburgh, Germany. I've been head of both of those programs, uh, and also a period that I was the president of the uh, sister city organization. All right. Well, what I would like to do is, um, I put together just a kind of a PowerPoint. I don't want to PowerPoint us to death, but it'll give Hale and I a couple of talking points. And then what I've got is a bunch of pictures from exchanges and stuff that we've done in the past. Um, so the way I'd like to run this is if anybody has any questions, thoughts, or whatever, please do not hesitate to unmute yourself and join in. I think it'll make it much more interesting in, in, what we're, in what's going on. Does anybody have any questions right off before we get started? Okay, well, let me go ahead and, and kick this off here. I'm going to share my desktop here. And let's go over here and let's start this slideshow. Oops. Okay, I just want to make sure everybody can see my screen okay. Let me say yes. Yes, I Ava. can. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, well, like I said, we're going to be talking about Las Cruces Sister Cities. My name is Tim Chapel, and my partner in crime is Hale Huber. Uh, what I want to talk about, and we'll get through as much of this as we can today, because down at the bottom part, we've got lots of photos, and we'll, we'll talk about them all day. I'm a teacher, so you put me in front of a microphone, and I'm off to the, to the races. So, But what we're going to talk about first is what is Sister Cities International? what is Las Cruces Sister Cities, and then in particular, in respect to um, Hispanic Heritage Month, is what is the Las Cruces Sister Cities relationship in Laredo, Mexico. And then we'll get into some visits we've had recently. And then earlier this year, actually, we had a, a concert, and Hale and I were able to attend the Mayoral Summit, which was very interesting. So, Las Cruces- Kim, your mic, I think, may be low. I'm, I'm having trouble you hearing you, too. And one, uh, one of the other uh, participants also indicated they were having trouble. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I'll have to yes. take this out of share for just a second. Let me fix this. For some reason, uh, my system. Uh, just a second. For some reason, when I connect, sometimes we it turns. You can hear me fine now? Yeah. Correct. Test, test, test. Yep. Output. Headphones. Input. Let me turn this. You can hear me now. It was just when I was sharing. Right. Okay. This is turned up. So. Okay. One other place to check. Is which one of these guys is losing? That's the problem. How about now? Can you hear me better? Yes. A little deeper? Okay. Yeah. Let me try this. So let's try it again. Sorry about that. Now can everybody hear me? 
can you check on that, Jose? Is everybody giving me yes. a thumbs up? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, good. Um, so the history behind Sister Cities International was in 1956, President Eisenhower established it. After being in two world wars, he realized that we need to, to try and other ways to learn to work together. And so he intended to promote friendship and international understanding through what he called people to people contact, or as we call it now, citizen ambassadors, where we actually meet with people from other countries face to face, um, go, you know, meet people in businesses, go in, uh, go to meals, go to people's houses. It's, it's just an, an, a marvelous thing. And right now they have over a thousand U.S. cities are paired with over 1700 foreign cities. So it's, it's at an international level, but it's, it's handled also at the local level by each, each individual city. Okay. Now for Las Cruces, Las Cruces, we have two sister cities, one in Nienburg, Germany, and one in Laredo, Mexico. So if you look here with Nienburg, you'll notice it's just above Hanover. Um, Berlin is over here. Um, and that's a sister city. It's about half our, about half our size, a little less. Um, and then we have Laredo, Mexico, which is what we're talking about today, which is down right, you know, you can't hardly see it, but it says Torreon, which is south of Chihuahua. You go down, leave Juarez, go south of Chihuahua, and you get down to Torreon, Gomez, Palacio. Laredo is considered the tri-cities. Laredo is the smallest one of the cities, um, but it's about the same size as us. Um, Hale, would you like to say something about our about our ex experiences with Laredo? Uh, yes, we uh, we've had our relationship with Laredo for over thirty years, and it started out in a relationship uh, between Doniana Community College and a. Uh, a technical high school, Sabatis Cuatro, in uh, Laredo. And because of the intense connection with those two schools for years, they, uh, there were many people that got interested in the relationship. And uh, so they decided to start a sister city program. And it's a actual agreement between the city government of the city government of Las Cruces and it's uh, a um, relationship between again people to people and we have had groups of students going down there groups of uh, adults uh, some students have wanted to improve their Spanish have gone down there we've had many groups from there come up here and we participated in a number of artistic events uh, down in Laredo, and they have up here in Las Cruces. Yeah, what, so what I'd like to talk about is just a couple of the recent things that we've had. Is one is, I'll start with the last time we went down to Laredo, which is in 2016. So I have some photos, and we'll talk about the details of what happened at the trip back in 2019. Um, the, the, uh, a group from Laredo came up and visited us. And so we'll talk about that. And then if we have time, we'll get to the mayoral summit and the sister cities concert, which was sponsored by the new horizons, um, orchestra. So let me out of here and come over here and share some photos. So these photos here, can everybody see this picture? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is the last time we went down. This is myself and Hale. And we were down there um, in Laredo, Mexico, in this beautiful shady park. And we were just getting started with a tour of, of one of the areas there. And uh, so when, uh, I'm going to kind of do this a little bit in chronological order. So you can see while we were down there, they were having, it was a Independence Day parade. And I just wanted to show you that um, Laredo, um, is a lot like here. It's at the bottom end of the Chihuahuan Desert. So we're at the north end, they're at the south end. So they grow 
um, pecans and chili and alfalfa and, and all the same things we do here. So it's really neat. So, but they also have parades like we do. So they have the classical um, dress and attire and people performing different things during a parade. They also have the ballet folklorio, which they have just these beautiful dresses and stuff. And they're people, different groups going around showing off, showing off what they have. Right. And believe it or not, in Mexico, they also have marching bands. I know Jose was down there one time when they had a marching band come and perform for us. And it was truly amazing. It's not something unique to America or Canada. They have some marching bands down there and they're quite good. Um, they also have the local gymnastic groups, which is kind of cute. And then the, the typical drum and bugle corps, which is common amongst a lot of schools down in, in Laredo. They also have floats. And now we're going to talk about this. Um, I'll let Hale talk a little bit about this because when we went down, we had, we're going to sign uh, an agreement between the sister cities. So Hale, would you like to take over here? Yeah, that's, uh, we, what we did is basically assign a reaffirmation of the relation, sister city relationship between Laredo and Las Cruces. The original um, agreement was signed about 35 years ago, and um, they, uh, the uh, fellow to the looking at the picture, the left of the mayor. Um, uh, he is Jose Frias, who is, has uh, been the president of their sister city foundation committee uh, for about uh, 15 years or so. And he promoted the idea of re-signing uh, uh, the agreement between Lerdo and Las Cruces um, and the, the new mayor um, was uh, very much enthusiastic about this. She is a retired engineer, and I being a retired engineer also, um, we, uh, we uh, had a, a great communication together and a really positive time while we were there. Okay, yeah, that's, this is, this is the mayor down there. You'll see her, she was at the end of her term. She also came up here and we'll see her in the next, um, when we talk about going down there. So I just want to show you that, that we have where everybody's, they have lots of every, you know, presence. And this was at one of the uh, haciendas there that they've refurbished for public meetings and stuff like that. So we had lots of, lots of wine. They also took us on, on a trolley tour of the town and, You'll notice here it says Gomez Palacio, which again is part of the Tri-Cities. It was an open air trolley, which they used for tours, which is absolutely fabulous driving around on. Got to see a lot of the sights of the city. Uh, here we are in one of the parks. They have, they have a lot of parks down there, which um, are used quite extensively by the, the, by the locals. We also had another uh, after we had the formal part of this, we went around and you can't have any gathering in Mexico without people dancing. So they managed to even get me to stand up and dance a little bit. And of course, Hale's having a good time. And you'll, uh, let's see, that doesn't show a picture of the band. There was a live band back here playing too, which was really, which was really neat. Um, this is one of the churches down there in Laredo and, um, it has a lot of historical value. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the older buildings were built. Um, what, Hale, probably in the 1500s, 1300s? It was a long time ago. Right. Probably 1500s. Yeah. And this is, a, this is another park where you can see that they have lots of amusements for the kids and merry-go-rounds and things like that. And I had to, I had to show this. They took us to this house. This is the ceiling of the house. I couldn't believe the brickwork that was in there. It was just, it was pretty amazing. Now the next slide I'm gonna show you is kind of interesting because as you're part of this, the, alert, the Sister Cities International, you get to be friends with, with the people from the other countries, which I think is, um, I was involved 
with Dynana Community College for a number of years before um, we, I, we started working together, um, the Sister Cities International and the exchange we were having here. And you get to be friends. So during this trip, when we were down there, there was a friend of mine, a friend of, friend of, of mine who was getting married. And so they invited us to their wedding. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to throw these slides in just to sort of show you that um, it, that's, that's part of what makes this whole thing worthwhile is going down and making friends and, um, you know, going to weddings, going to quinceañeras, that kind of stuff. And so here's a picture of me and my wife. My wife is also actually from, from Mexico, close to Torreon in a place called um, San Pedro. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to say about, about this hail? Uh, no, we can go on. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about when we take a trip down, um, down into Mexico, right? I might share some information about that. Typically, the way that we've traveled down there is uh, using uh, the overnight buses from um, Ciudad Juarez, and they have they typically leave about uh, eight or nine o'clock at night. The trip takes about twelve hours, and so we get down there about seven or eight in the morning, which is an ideal time, and we're supposedly sleeping on the bus, which. I know I have difficulty sleeping on the bus, but they're very comfortable and the seats are like first class airline seats and it's very inexpensive. It's only about $50 each way. And they now have in Mexico uh, very inexpensive airlines that are flying between a lot of cities. And, um, you know, since the pandemic, uh, they travel has been greatly reduced, but um, we've, uh, we've traveled many, many times and uh, down to Lerdo and, uh, and they sending delegations up here. So thank you. Okay. Um, so the, let me go back here. The next thing I would like to talk about, if anybody has any questions is we, we sort of alternate. Um, it's about every two year, two or three years. There had been a big break because of the violence in Mexico, but we sort of reciprocate. When we go down there, then we try and invite them to come up here. So in, in 2019, we had a group come up from Mexico. And when they arrived here, this is actually in, in the restaurant in the Hotel Encanto. They were staying there. This is actually the mayor right here. Okay, and then she brought some of her city councilmen, um, some other people from the city um, came up here. So you'll see later on how we had uh, meetings with the city and stuff. And so this turned out to be a really great, um, just time to sit back and relax. They got, got here and we sat around and just chatted around the table for a while. Um, I'm personally not fluent in Spanish at all. But it's amazing. We can. There's enough people who can translate. We can communicate quite well with each other. Okay. So one of the other things we did is we had um, usually people from the community will volunteer for us to have stuff at their homes, which is really nice. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's a little wet here. I think it's the last time it rained here in Las Cruces. <laughs> but. We, so we all stayed inside, but then we all came out and we're sitting around tables, enjoying each other's company, just sitting around having fun, doing the person to person communications here. Uh, Hale, you know whose place this is? I've, I've never seen it before. <laughs> that's that's Hale's, Hale's house. It's a beautiful, beautiful home. Um, so when they first got here, we had to get together at Hotel Encanto again, inaugurating, celebrating, they were gonna come up here and sign initiative. So we had, you'll notice that there's dignitaries from Las Cruces, here's the mayor. Again, some of the representatives who came from Mexico. Um, I'm taking the pictures, so I'm not here, right? So we had this, and the city actually came up with this logo for us, which is really, really nice. 
Um, later on, we had an official signing ceremony. This is at City Hall, Las Cruces City Hall, where we had the people going to um, sign the paperwork. Let me move on here. Showing you a couple other pictures of the dignitaries. They brought down this beautiful plaque. One thing that people don't realize, and I'll talk a little later about this, is that they have marble down in, in Lerdo, and they had this beautiful plaque made to commemorate the signing which the city has mounted in City Hall, which is a very nice thing. They also sent some pictures, and around town you're going to start seeing in public buildings these beautiful pictures. This is the, the City Hall, if you will, in Lerdo. It's all lit up at nighttime here, and they have a bunch of other pictures that they presented, which was very nice of them to do so we can, um, people here can see what Laredo actually looks like. Here they were react, actually re-signing um, the agreement. We did it down in Mexico and here because unfortunately Ken Miyagishima was planning on going down with us, but couldn't make it because his father had gotten ill. Um, and so they came up here with the intent that we would re-sign it again between the two mayors signing it. And then this is um, in front of Brannigan Library. And um, Hale, I'm going to let you talk about, about the tile and the marble and stuff here. Yeah, I've, this is a good picture to look at because this is the back side of one of the murals I believe there are four murals down there. And this is to commemorate Juan de Oñate's coming up to this area 400 years ago and bringing, um, I'm not sure how many, but hundreds of uh, colonists coming from, many of them from Me uh, Spain originally, and then uh, many from Mexico to settle New Mexico and they went north in New Mexico and established many of the small um, Hispanic villages that are scattered all over New Mexico. And um, the original uh, uh, and monument that is called La Entrada, which means the entrance or the coming uh, of the Spanish to New Mexico, and the La Entrada Monument was right on Main Street originally. And then the city decided to open up. This was done about 20 years ago. The city opened up Main Street again, and they had to remove and tear down the monument. And Tony Pennock, who had done, That's him right here. Uh, had done the uh, first monument and uh, done all the design of it, um, saved as much of the uh, marble from Lerdo that the city of Lerdo had donated to Las Cruces. And uh, so he uh, had reincorporated uh, as much of the marble as he could in the new Lantrano Monument, which was just dedicated, I believe, last year uh, and is down in the um, uh, Johnson Park, uh, right near City Hall and the Brannigan Library. That's right. Yeah, and we're, I'm going to. We got some pictures here of the other side. If you haven't been down there, it's just fabulous to go see. So, for example, here's one of the murals, and here's some um, Mr. Pinnock talking, and he was sharing with them about, you know, what the what the depictions are because Lerdo is actually on on the the Santa Fe Trail. It went down through Lerdo and, and I mean, we're all, our history connected together goes that far back, right? Um, yeah, Jose? Not Santa Fe, Camino Real. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right, Camino Royal. Thank you, thank you, yeah, absolutely. Which, which, which in English is the Royal Road and it was the original Spanish road that went from Mexico City up to um, Santa Fe and was operative for several hundred years. What's neat about the Camino Real is it happens to flow right uh, or uh, run right through the spaceport of New Mexico up towards TRC. 
And uh, here you have a 400 year old or many hundreds of year old uh, Spanish Royal Road right where the spaceport is. What, what a contrast of ages and history. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a really good point. That it um, and our connections, I know, um, run quite quite deep. We had a guest speaker one time t coming and talking about how he had gone down and was doing some research down in the in the churches down in Lerdo and Torreon at the old documents from the the priests and stuff that came up that came up with them and how the history of what was going on there. So it's it's quite extensive. Um, I'd like to move on next is that at another um, house that we had, we had another gathering where people around this, this was a potluck where everybody sort of brought some food and everybody's just sitting around enjoying having a good time and communicating. The other thing we did is we had a long session with the mayor and the city councilors here and the mayor and the city councilors from Lerdo. And it was truly an amazing event because I didn't realize how many of our city councilors were quite fluent in Spanish. And so the communication was, was quite detailed. Um, uh, before and I go on. What was, what was amazing to me about the, this sharing is that we had, as part of this, many of the heads of the various departments of Las Cruces uh, city government and how many of them were bilingual, Spanish and English. And so it was an incredible exchange uh, and indication of Las Cruces's connection uh, to Mexico and ability of, to communicate in Spanish and English. Yeah, one of the things I'd like to point out is that from this meeting, um, one of the things that the city councilors had mentioned um, down in Mexico because we had the, the chief of the fire department come over was, was talking about how they, are, they were really lacking on some stuff down in Mexico. You know, even their firefighters are lacking basic equipment. So the chief of the fire department took up the pledge and says, look, I will round up some equipment and we will get it for you. And unfortunately, the COVID interrupted us being able to take equipment down. But as I understand, they have quite a, quite a stack of of equipment when things open back up, we will be trying to take down to help them out with their, with their fire department. So it's just, it's one of those things that goes back to the sister cities international, people to people, setting down, having meals, talking about stuff, you realize, hey, here's a problem, let's solve it. And literally in a matter of minutes, we had a solution and we're working on trying to, to get it solved. And I think that was just fabulous. Another thing that has happened over the years with Lerdo is the county of Lerdo basically is about the size of Doniana County. And they had, have had very limited ambulance availability down there. And so over the, the last 15, 20 years, we have donated several used ambulances uh, to Lerdo, which has allowed them to provide much better service out to the uh, outlying areas uh, beyond Le the Lerdo city itself. Yeah, yeah, that was good. While they were here, we just walked over from City Hall from that meeting and talked them down downtown with our newly renovated downtown, and they were quite impressed. Uh, as am I, how, how we've turned the downtown area around. I can't wait until we can open it back up. We took them by the Oregon Mountain Outfitters so that they could see and, and get some nice t-shirts and stuff. We also went down to the Brannigan Cultural Center. Before we were interrupted by the COVID-19, we were gonna, we had scheduled to have our meetings down there and the city has been over backwards. We actually work very closely with the city of Las Cruces and um, Jamie Rickman, who who's our coordinated with the city on coordinating all of this kind of stuff. And they really got a kick out of, we had um, interpreters there talking about what was going on with the projects that were being displayed there at the cultural center. Um, you know, they were quite interested. 
One of the things we also do at the end is we have a, try and have a big gala farewell when they leave. So on the last night, we were at the, um, gosh, okay, where were we? <laughs> It's, it's the home builders. Home builders. Thank home, you. The word just uh, home association. builders. Yeah, association. So we had some tables set up and we had people from all over. And what I want to talk about is that um, both the mayors from Mexico, they brought up, they had somebody make this picture of Mayor Miyagishima and the city hall. This is out of dyed marble fr from the quarries down in Lerdo. It's not very often I see a politician at a loss for words, but Ken was actually overwhelmed by the kindness and generosity of this picture. So that was, that was truly, truly nice that they, that they did something like that. Hale also got a plaque. I did too, but I didn't take a picture of it, but it was very nice. Very nice. Uh, I wanted to point out these couple of guys, these guys here. Um, they're from, uh, Juarez, right? And um, they came up to play. I think I have a, no, I don't have a picture of them. They were, they played, and I'm going to show up. Here is Jorge uh, Martinez, who's the director of the New Horizons Orchestra, has been very involved trying to get us collaborating um, also in music. There they were back in, in the background. They came and played some actual wonderful music for us while we were there. Um, so they were, they were very happy. Yeah, they're actually students of Jorge's. They're from Juarez, but they come up to uh, New Mexico State and study music under um, Jorge Martinez, who is a professor of music uh, here in Las Cruces. And he is from originally from Torreon, and his parents live in Lerdo. And so there's a lot of connections. Yeah, it's it's a it's a smaller world than than what you would think. So after we had the um, sort of the big farewell banquet and had had our good time, um, then we we sent them off. They had actually driven up here in this custom um, Mercedes Mercedes uh, bus. bus. <laughs> so uh, that was that was really nice that they could do that because it just makes. The drive down there is about 10 hours if you have a professional driver and you can get through customs pretty quick. Okay, so that takes us back to the beginning. Okay, how are we doing on time, Jose? Oh, about 20 minutes. Okay. With some Q&A afterward? Yes, yeah. I just wanted to touch on, on uh, one other thing that um, part of the Sister Cities International is uh, the city graciously uh, sponsored a huge table at the mayoral summit. And they've had this before, but it's between Ciudad Juarez and El Paso, Texas is where they sponsored it. So they, this was actually an event that went cross borders and the city helped um, fund us to go and it was a big sponsor of the whole event. And so we got a chance to go and there was mayors and dignitaries from all over the country. The actual, the president of the foundation for Sister Cities International is the mayor of San Antonio, which is um, pretty impressive. He was there to give a talk. So this is down there. These were, these were the same guys who played for us and they got to play there at the opening. This is in, uh, Camino Real, I don't remember the name of the hotel in El Paso that overlooks and you can see Juarez out that way. So we had lots of dignitaries. That's by the way, Mayor Dean Margo of El Paso. Dean Margo. And so in the convention center there, it was a big, a big event. They went all out with this where they had um, group um, round tables. They had breakout sessions where we went to lots of different stuff and got to meet lots of different people. Hale and I made sure every time we were setting up one of these tables, it was somebody new and different. And it was just amazing the people that you meet. Um, this is one of the breakout sections of this gentleman here is from um, Socorro, Texas. And he, they have 
a number of sister cities where they are trying to keep sister cities along the Camino Royale, which is a, a neat idea. Okay. Uh, so after we, one evening, we went over to Juarez, which was really kind of nice. They took us over in buses, and I've never had a police escort through Juarez, which was kind of nice. And they took us to, at the Chamisal, they'd opened a brand new museum over there, which if you get a chance when things lighten up, I encourage you guys to go to, because it was really a beautiful museum. I took a picture, and part of it, what they're trying to do is, this used to be a hacienda, it's a model that was there in Juarez at one time, talking about how it built up and, and things like that. They also took us, if you go downtown, if you've been to Juarez, this is a big cathedral that they have there. They have closed off this whole street now, and it's like a big street festival down there, and they have these beautiful colors. And we got a chance to go down there and a big photo op. Then they took us to this, um, what would you call it, Hale? A, uh, um, it was a very large an restaurant. Event, an event center is what it yeah. is. It's one that had just opened up down there, and you can see it's decorated beautiful. And they had several different bands and musicians come and play for us. Um, they had a typical, you know, um, um, folk dancing. They were, these people were really, really good. They changed out several times. They had this other group, which I thought was quite interesting. I got the, the story from somebody that was sitting next to us. Is you notice that um, the dancers here are set up um, kind of like the, uh, the, the 50s um, dancers out of, out of Southern California, where they had the uh, um, problems after World War II. Well, zoot, zoot suit? Zoot suitors, yes, thank you. And um, it turns out that a lot of the people that were there in, in Southern California, Bakersfield and stuff, were from Juarez, so a lot of these people have. Well, these guys here, Remember where I was showing you, they had that big open area now there with the big WADA sign. On Saturdays and Sunday evenings, get out there and just dance. And they, and they had some wonderful music. That they were wonderful dancers, and they're just people of the community. And I thought it was really neat that the mayor of WADA invited these. There's no official group, just said, come in and dance for us. And I thought that, that said a lot. Here was some, uh, some mariachi dancers. I mean, they went all out for us. Is there anything else you'd like to add about that mayoral summit, Hale? Yeah, one of the things I think that was very important is there were uh, perhaps 20 or 30 towns and cities from the U.S. and 20 or 30 towns and cities uh, from Mexico, and their mayors involved. And our mayor, um, Ken Miyagashima, was one of the principal speakers there at the conference. And so it really solidified Las Cruces' um, importance in the Sister City program and connection to El Paso and Juarez and Mexico. Hey, I thought it was really interesting too how um, the people of Juarez and the people of El Paso really don't distinguish themselves from each other a lot of ways. They, they consider themselves one big city because there's so much commerce going back and forth. We saw a lot of information about the trade and, and everything that goes on between us. And at the time of the summit, um, there was obviously tensions over the border and things like that, but the, peop the mayors and the, and the politicians from both cities was going, nah, it's, that's not what the people feel. So I thought that was, that was very heartening to see. And just one last picture to show you here. This was the Sister Cities concert. I had mentioned that um, Jorge Martinez is the conductor of the New Horizons Orchestra. Well, they invited some students to come up. And let me switch over here real quick. So the New Horizons Orchestra, this is their website, and I've got the links posted here if anybody wants to see them. It's local people. It's all volunteer, and they get together, and they play, they play music and have wonderful concerts. And Jorge had talked them into dedicating this one 
to sister cities because they were inviting up this quartet of students. You can see the whole group here from Torreon in Lerdo, where the students are from, to come up and play, play with the orchestra here. While they were here, they also had um, sessions with the instructors, like the the violin teachers at NMSU and the and the the violas and all of the different instruments that they played did one-on-one -on -one lessons with these people, all volunteer, which I thought was fantastic. That's an experience that shows how how music, art, and stuff can transcend um, the political issues that may be going on in the world. Yeah, and half of the concert was uh, Spanish music, half was uh, American music, and uh, it was just an incredible uh, collection of incredible music. And the, the entire, every seat in the place, there wasn't even standing room only. Yeah, uh, the, right here. The, see it. the head yeah. person uh, there at the, the hall uh, asked all the young, younger people, the students, if they could give us older people uh, the um, chairs available because the, uh, the place was packed. It was an uh, incredible uh, session. Yeah, it really was. So with that, I guess we've got a little time. If anybody has any questions um, about how Sister Cities work, um, Vita, I notice you're here. If you, if you can unmute, I, Vita has gone down with us. Um, Kathy, do you guys have anything you'd like to add? Hi. Hi, hi Tim. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Vita. Yes, I have to, I have to agree um, with everything you've said and shown. Um, belonging to Sister Cities is um, an honor. I mean, it's really nice to have an international group like that. Um, I really enjoyed um, being in the group. I hope to join it again soon sometime. Um, I remember... <clears throat> all our crazy trips down there and um, driving the vans. Oh my Lord. <laughs> on those freeways that they have down there. It's like, Oh my goodness. And um, they've taken us to so many beautiful places. They're so gracious. They're really kind people. Um, you know, they really open their doors to us and um, we to them, I hope. Um, but Things have kind of come to a halt between, you know, politics and the pandemic. We've had to slow down somewhat. Do you know, Tim, when it's going to start back up again? Uh, well, we're, we're having virtual meetings now, and we hope to be able to try and get the people both in Mexico and Nienberg to join us for that. Um, but until they, because technically uh, only official travel can happen between the U.S. and Mexico, and same thing in the U.S. and Europe. So until that, until that lightens up, you know, hopefully sometime next year we'll be able to get something going. Because like I said, we've got a bunch of stuff we would like to take down for the fire department. You know, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bunch of people, but it would certainly be good just to get to get things moving again. Yeah, you know, I can't wait. Oh, it sure. Would. <laughs> and um, I remember uh, meeting Jorge Martinez at our community pool in my neighborhood and we started talking and he's the one that told me he was from Laredo. Well, his family was there and I, cause we'd just come back from a, one of our trips down there. And um, that's when he uh, so graciously offered to come play for our group. Remember the first time they played in our auditorium, our Dasser, mm -hmm. and he's been fabulous. We can't say enough about that group. Um, <clears throat> and, and then you, you're also doing the German sister cities. Is that correct? The yep. one with Germany? Yes. Yeah, that's still, that's still going. And again, the, well, it's easier for us to do a, a Zoom with Laredo because we're, they're only one hour difference, but uh, Germany is, <laughs> is seven or eight, eight hours. Eight difference. hours. So. Yeah, eight hours. So that can make it, so we may have to move those meetings in the morning for us so they don't have to get up at, right. in the middle of the morning. But we had had a schedule, a uh, possibility we were going to, the the Nienberg group was going to go over this fall, but that obviously 
got canceled because they have a big arts festival. We were going to try and send some people to. Okay. Well, if, if, and when it, you know, gets, to, you know, I would love to join back in. So just let me know when the next meetings are and I'll certainly be happy to participate for sure. Okay. And, absolutely. Um, help the way I can. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thanks, Tim, for bringing those pictures and giving us all that information. It was great. Yeah, I, 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 was, I knew we had a time limit, so I went through. I just highlighted some of the, the quick pictures we have. Um, we do have, let me, let me share my screen again real quick because I forgot to, to point this out. We do have, we do have a website. Las Cruces Sister Cities um, Foundation has a website on the webpage, and I'll show you a link to that, as well as the Sister Cities International has a webpage where you can go and find out more information about this kind of stuff. Um, okay. Let me go back to my PowerPoint here, because that was kind of the last thing I had. Um, we went and saw the photos, and then... Oops. Here is uh, some information I have on the links. Our foundation is, is kind of long, but if you just type in sister, Las Cruces Sister Cities, it'll come up under a Google search. It's kind of with Wild Apricot. Um, here is my email address, if anybody would like to email me or contact me directly. And then um, I put this link to the Sister Cities concert, New Horizons Orchestra Las, at Cruces, because um, I don't have the... Uh, the right to replay the concert. Um, you have to go to their site oh, okay. to kind of, if you want to watch it, but they have it there. Nice. It was a great concert. They had a, a kid come in from, uh, he's Anthony? Yeah. Anthony? No, it was uh, Who? Uh, south of Anthony. Uh, was it? Yeah, it may have been a little farther south. I don't think it was quite Anthony. as far as Summer Park, but this kid, he was 16 years old, sounded just like Frank Sinatra. You were wow. there, Kathy. Wasn't he amazing? Yeah, he was, he was truly phenomenal. So that takes us back to, do you have any questions? When do your next um, Zoom meeting, I guess? Or when is your next? We're um, having virtual, virtual meeting, I guess. Well, we're going to have a, uh, uh, a foundation meeting on the 21st. So uh, next Wednesday at seven o'clock. Um, um, if you're interested, email me and I can send you that because we're going to, uh, Hale and I are going to talk about at the first part of that meeting before we get to the, the business part about some of the stuff, a little more detail about what, we've, what we got from the, the mayoral summit because I think there's some real potential for, for sister cities to do some stuff you know, which I thought was just fabulous for us. And then, then in November, we've tried to set up the regular meetings on the third Wednesday of each month. Um, in November, we're going to have a joint um, Lerdo Nienberg, and we're going to do a virtual potluck. So at seven o'clock, everybody gets to bring their favorite meal <laughs> and we're gonna sit around and eat. It was uh, something that the McKinney's had a great idea. And I thought, that's great. Then we can we don't have to worry about spilling red wine on the on the carpet at the <laughs> at the hall. So, Ms. okay. Carol, you have a well, that all question? sounds good to me for now, all right. because Thanks. you know that's all we can do right now. <laughs> sure. So it'll work. Carol, did you have a question? Uh, no, I don't have a question. I just want to thank you for doing this. It was very interesting. Oh, well, thank you. I hope if you, if you get a chance, we're, we'd love to have more members. That would be fantastic. Oh, really? Huh. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Carol. Hi, Hale. I, I knew you were involved, but I had no idea <laughs> even who our sister city is or, right. that we, or that we have more than one. Right. And yeah. one of our, uh, one of the City councilmen are interested in uh, perhaps uh, developing a sister city relationship with the community that he lived in in Africa many years oh, ago. Cool. He spent three years down there and he uh, has 
kept in contact with them all these years and would be uh, interested in developing a sister city relationship. But it requires committed people on both ends, both communities and people that are willing and able to help this sister city process work. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of, it's all volunteer and, uh, and, but it's been the absolute joy of my life, my involvement with the sister city program. Yeah, uh, yeah, me too. You're yeah. doing this. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Jose um, had asked us to have a table last year at the Hispanic Heritage when he had that at the community college. And so Kathy and I went up there and we had a table set up and it was, it was really kind of neat. The number of people, Jose did a fabulous job of getting a lot of people to turn out for it. And the number of people that we had that come by and go, hey, we've seen the signs around town. We were wondering what was going on. So we got to actually talk to quite a few people in doing that. And that's one of the, at least my goals as one of as the president right now is to try and make sure more people are aware of what we are out there. That was why we were going to be having the meetings at the Brannigan Center and stuff like that. But this COVID lockdown things just put a brakes on a lot of stuff. So hopefully sure this will lift soon and we can get back into full swing. Hey. Oh, make it a point to go to Johnson Park and see that monument. I didn't even know about it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks again. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you. Thanks to Hale and Tim for presenting on this and everyone else for joining us on this presentation. We have time. We have two more presentations tomorrow, one on research at 10 in the morning and one on Hispanic mathematicians at 2 p.m. You all have a great day. Good night. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Thanks, Jose. Thanks, Bye, Hale. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks Bye. for coming. Thank you for producing it.